Good afternoon. You're watching the Midday News on Rajya Sabha Television. All the biggest developing news stories at the top of this are coming up in the next 30 minutes. Let us start with the headlines. Demand for immediate return of Air Force pilot captured by Pakistan grows. Prime Minister Modi to chair a meeting of the Cabinet Committee on Security, followed by Union Cabinet meet at his residence. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitharaman meets uh, the three service chiefs. India will stand as one, will work as one, asserts Prime Minister Narendra Modi, says necessary to ensure nothing is uh, done to dent the morale of security forces, addresses uh, one crore BJP workers via video conferencing. In a setback to the Associated Journals Limited, a Delhi High Court upholds the eviction order, asks the publisher of National Herald to vacate a Herald House in New Delhi. From 1st of March, income tax returns will be issued only via e-mode, says the Income Tax Department, makes it necessary for taxpayers to link a PAN with their bank accounts. And Vice President M. N. K. Naidu attends the Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam Summit and Awards on Innovation in Governance 2019. Confers awards to those who have done exceptional work in improving governance. Urges the United Nations to come together to cut source of terror. The top story this afternoon, India says that it expects the immediate and safe return of an Indian Air Force pilot captured by Pakistan after an uh, air combat that marked the worst escalation between the neighbours in decades. New Delhi summoned the Pakistan envoy and lodged a strong protest over what it called was an unprovoked act of aggression by Pakistan, saying that its, uh, target, his, its jets had targeted military installations in India a day after Indian fighter jets uh, crossed the line of control and carried out a strike at a major terror camp in Balakot. In various uh, videos circulated by Pakistani accounts, uh, the pilot was seen as blindfolded and wounded, his arms tied behind his back, being interrogated. And India said that it strongly objects to Pakistan's uh, vulgar uh, display of an injured personnel of the Indian Air Force in violation of all norms of international humanitarian law and the Geneva Convention. It was made clear that Pakistan now would be well advised to ensure that no harm comes to the Indian defence personnel in its custody. Earlier, the government had said that uh, its pilot was missing in action after shooting down a Pakistani aircraft that was targeting Indian military installations. Tensions between India and Pakistan escalated further on Wednesday. Pakistan tried to enter the Indian airspace early in the day in response to the airstrikes carried out by the Indian Air Force in Balakot against a terror group jaish e mohammed And India responded effectively to Pakistan and shot, uh, in fact uh, shot down a Pakistani Air Force F-16 fighter jet, foiling its attempt to target Indian military installations. But uh, during the encounter, the Indian Air Force uh, lost a MiG-21 and the pilot was reported missing in action. Pakistan claims uh, the Indian pilot is in its custody. India had informed about counter-terrorism action it took yesterday against a terrorist training camp of jaish e mohammed in Pakistan. Based on credible evidence that jaish e mohammed intended to launch more attacks. Against this counter-terrorism action, Pakistan has responded this morning by using its air force to target military installations on the Indian side. Due to her high state of readiness and alertness, Pakistan's attempts were foiled successfully. The Pakistan Air Force was detected and the Indian Air Force responded instantly. In that aerial engagement, one Pakistan Air Force fighter aircraft was shot down by a MiG-21 Bison of the Indian Air Force. The Pakistani aircraft was seen by ground forces 
falling from the sky on the Pakistan side. In this engagement, we have unfortunately lost one MiG-21. The pilot is missing in action. Pakistan has claimed that he is in their custody. We are ascertaining the facts. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called a cabinet meet at his residence uh, later today. A cabinet committee on security is also expected to be held before the union cabinet meet. Before the cabinet meet, the Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman met the three service chiefs today. All right, uh, let's uh, go across to our colleague Panchanan Mishra for more on that story. Panchanan, now the CCS meeting is uh, going to take place in the evening to take stock of the situation because tensions have es escalated between India and Pakistan and a union cabinet meeting is also slated uh, for the evening today. Uh, both the meetings scheduled to take place at Prime Minister's residence. What are the details that you can give us? Yes, Ashurya, uh, Cabinet Committee on Security and uh, then after Cabinet meeting will be held at uh, uh, Prime Minister's residence. Uh, but we have seen that uh, the situation between India and Pakistan is, uh, is regularly tense and since uh, yesterday evening when uh, foreign uh, MEA was MEA briefed on the whole incident of uh, uh, MiG-21 pi uh, uh, pilot captured in the Pakistan and the whole incident we, we, we have witnessed. Uh, no uh, formal, uh, any, any formal comment from uh, government has come since uh, uh, evening. Uh, yesterday evening. So uh, it's a very crucial meeting today, a CCS meeting and uh, apart from this, uh, uh, we have seen that in, just behind me in South Block, uh, Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman met uh, all the three services chief also. So many things and many uh, incidents are un unfolding but uh, government uh, is, is, is still uh, right now uh, not commented formally on any of these issues. But uh, we have seen that uh, from uh, uh, United Nations to uh, ban uh, Jaisho Mohammed, many countries are supporting from that. And uh, up to the release of our uh, uh, one of the captured pilot Abhinandan, many things are going on, and government is uh, still trying its hard to uh, to put its uh, uh, its, uh, its favourable steps against the Pakistan, and uh, uh, as soon as our uh, this captured pilot uh, can be released, Ashurya. Absolutely. So the meeting, uh, CCS meeting at seven local on Marg will discuss steps to bring back uh, the Indian Air Force pilot who was captured by Pakistan yesterday. Uh, but uh, as you were mentioning, uh, Panchanan, about, uh, you know, a big win really for India as far as uh, the diplomatic measures are concerned because U.S., uh, U.K. and France have asked the United Nations to blacklist uh, Jaisi Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar. Any updates on that? Because so far, uh, you know, uh, it is not very clear what stand is uh, China probably going to take on that. Exactly. Uh, we still don't know what, what will be the... Uh, uh, face of the China on this whole incident, but uh, it's still in <coughs> India's big win. We can say that uh, all the big countries like France and the United States are all, all, all also there to uh, ban this Jaish e Mohammed uh, chief, uh, Maulana Masood Hazar. Hmm. So it's a regularly uh, uh, India was trying to do uh, something like that 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 can uh, 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 de-escalate the Pakistan in, in this entire scenario. So we have to see that what the international pressure will come on Pakistan and Pakistan have to uh, uh, bow down between these, this pressure because there is also, we, you have mentioned that uh, Geneva Convention uh, yes. for this uh, release of our not only pilot but also the UN, uh, the, the entire exercise of uh, through UN to ban the Jaish e Mohammed chief. So uh, it, we have to see that what further action the, our governments will take and certainly uh, there will be a, a, a win from uh, our side of, because uh, we have taken a s major steps regarding all the, both the incidents. Right, uh, Panchanan, thank you so much for, for all those updates there. You keep tracking all those developments and the two key meetings that are going to take place in uh, uh, Prime Minister's residence today. Thank you so much uh, so far for the details. And as Panchanan was telling us, uh, the United States, Britain and France have proposed that the United Nations Security Council blacklist Jaish e Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar. They also said that, that the attack on CRPF... Uh, Convoy in Kashmir was carried out by Jaish e Mohammed. The three countries in a proposal have asked the sanctions committee of the 15 member council to subject Azhar for an arms embargo, global travel ban, and also asset freeze. The committee operates by consensus, and the members have until 13th of the next month to raise objections, if any. The United, the United Nations Security Council condemned the 14th of February attack in a statement last week. 
Meanwhile, the United States has also asked Pakistan to abide by its Security Council commitments uh, to deny terrorists a safe haven and block their access to funds. This U.S. statement came after India on Wednesday handed over to Pakistan a dossier on specific details of the involvement of the jaish e mohammed in the Pulwama terror attack on CRPF convoy, as also the presence of camps of the U.N. proscribed terror outfit in that country. The U.S. State Department spokesperson said that the United States has called on India and Pakistan to cease all cross-border military activity and for a return to stability. Meanwhile, the UK has also urged India and Pakistan to exercise a restraint to avoid further escalation. Meanwhile, back home, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Wednesday appealed to the opposition parties to introspect their statement on blatant politicization of uh, the sacrifices of the armed forces. In a series of tweets, he said that it is being used by Pakistan to bolster their case. Arun Jaitley hit out at the opposition saying that why it is alleging that the government is politicizing the anti-terror operation where the whole nation is speaking in one voice. He reiterated that the Balakot operation was India's anti-terror preemptive strike to defend its sovereignty. And earlier, all opposition parties unanimously condemned the dastardly Pulwama attack by Pakistan-sponsored terrorists of jaish e mohammed in the meeting of the opposition parties attend attended by all the opposition parties. Uh, they lauded uh, the Indian Air Force's action against the terror camp of jaish e mohammed in a joint statement issued after the meeting of 21 opposition parties. All parties paid homage to the martyrs and expressed solidarity with the armed forces. The leaders, however also expressed uh, deep concern over the well-being of uh, the Indian uh, pilot in Pakistan custody. The opposition parties also said uh, that uh, the national security must transcend uh, narrow political considerations. The Samajwadi party, however, did not attend the meeting and national conference leader Omar Abdullah also skipped the meeting. Meeting of leaders of 21 political parties condemned the dastardly Pulwama terror attack by Pakistan-sponsored terrorists of jaish e mohammed on 14th February 2019. The meeting paid homage to our martyrs and expressed solidarity with our armed forces in crushing the menace of terrorism. The meeting lauded the action taken by the Indian Air Force against the terrorist camp on 26 February 2019 and praised our armed forces for their valour and their bravery. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that it is necessary to ensure that nothing is done to dent the morale of the security forces. He was interacting with about one crore BJP workers in 15,000 locations through what the party said was the world's largest video conference. PM Modi said that India will fight, live, work and win as one. And nobody can create hurdles in its march towards development. He added that India is grateful to all those who are protecting the nation. The nation can scale new heights of development. The Prime Minister said that India is going to attain even more strength and development in the times to come. Let's listen in to what the Prime Minister is saying at the moment. ईमानदारी को पसंद करेगी ये मेरा पक्का विश्वास है अपने काम पर ध्यान दे और हम पूरे देश की तरह साउथ में भी अच्छा प्रदर्शन करेंगे आइए अब हम झारग्राम चलते हैं वाह पश्चिम बंगाल का उत्साह तो बड़ा जोरों में दिखता है भाई हाँ पश्चिम बंगाल की ताकत तो देश देख रहा है और मैं पश्चिम बंगाल के कार्यकर्ताओं का बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन करता हूँ और आप जिस प्रकार के संकटों को झेल करके काम कर रहे हैं लोकतंत्र की रक्षा के लिए जिस प्रकार से आप मुसीबतें झेल रहे हैं देश के कोने कोने में जब इसका पता चलेगा तो पश्चिम बंगाल के कार्यकर्ताओं के सामने हमारा सर झुकेगा क्योंकि मैं जानता हूँ आप कितनी मेहनत करते हैं मैं जानता हूँ कितनी तकलीफें झेलते हैं मैं जानता हूं और इसे पश्चिम बंगाल के हमारे कार्यकर्ता तो अनेक अनेक अभिनंदन के अधिकार है आइए बताइए 
झारग्राम क्या कह रहा है नमस्ते प्रधानमंत्री जी नमस्ते गौरव राजकोडू झारग्राम जिला से गोपीवल्लभपुर बूथ का एक साधारण बूथ कार्यकर्ता हूँ सबसे पहले भारतीय सेना द्वारा जो पाकिस्तान में यार स्ट्राइक किया गया उसके लिए भारतीय सेना और आपको बहुत बधाई देता हूँ मेरा सवाल ये है कि क्या 2019 में देश भर में महागठबंधन का कोई असर होता दिख रहा है देखिए एक तो ये महामिलावट है ये महागठबंधन बोलना ही बंद कर दीजिए देखिए महामिलावट के प्रभाव के बारे में पूछने से पहले आइए समझते हैं कि इस महामिलावट को आगे क्यों किया जा रहा है बैठिए गौरव बैठिए आप हकीकत तो यह है कि खुद का अस्तित्व बचाने के लिए कांग्रेस छोटे छोटे दलों के कंधे पर सवार होने के लिए रास्ते खोज रही है छोटे छोटे दलों की बिखरी हुई ताकत के भरोसे वो फिर से अपना जिंदगी ढूंढ रही है ये मिलावट कांग्रेस की सरकार बनाने के लिए नहीं है आप समझ लीजिए ये पूरी कोशिश ये पूरा मिलावट जो चल रहा है वो सिर्फ कांग्रेस को जीवित रखने के लिए है कांग्रेस को अस्तित्व को बचाने के लिए है All right, so that was uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's message of uh, unity, where he is interacting with the BJP workers, BJP karyakartas, and he has made it very clear that India will live as one, fight as one, and win as one. Let's get you some other news now. The Income Tax Department conducted a sensitive search on Wednesday that covered the head of a prominent organization in connection with the alleged terror financing and anti-national activities. Four premises in the Kashmir Valley and three in the national capital were searched. The IT department has uh, not named any organization or the persons involved. In a statement, the IT department said that the search action has uh, yielded uh, credible evidence of large-scale undisclosed financial transactions. Without providing specific details, the department said uh, that it unearthed the clinching evidence of huge unaccounted expenditure having been incurred in cash. on the reconstruction and remodeling of the residential premises presently being used by the tax evaders family in the search action uh, three hard disks were also seized and the analysis of the information contained in these hard disks is uh, likely to yield even more substantial evidence against the tax evader and his associates this action is part of a concerted a drive uh, to trace illegal sources of funding that has financed the separatist elements and their activities in the kashmir valley and amidst the standoff between india and pakistan an external affairs minister sushma swaraj will leave for abu dhabi today to take part in the plenary session of oic summit now this is the first oic summit in which india has been invited as a special guest for the plenary of the organization of islamic cooperation or oic Sushma Swaraj will address the plenary on uh, Friday in the presence of uh, 57 foreign ministers of Islamic majority nations. Now Pakistan is also one of the founder members of the grouping and has threatened to boycott the plenary if uh, Sushma Swaraj is there. In midday news we'll take a very short break news and updates continue on the other side stay tuned. The GST rates uh, for the under construction uh, projects uh, which were slashed has come as one of the most decisive moves by the GST council. What does it mean in terms of uh, the impact on the economy? Now the buyers will be more motivated to book the under construction home and in the affordable ca category the rate is now just 1%. The GST rate on cement that has not been reduced. will it not be a challenging time for the developers eventually this all the items in 28% will come down further we have to also consider the revenue of the states and center how would you really counter this narrative that it's it's a buyer centric move it is win win for all it is win for the consumer watch to the point with the union revenue secretary ajay bhushan pandey only on rajya sabha television
For centuries, Delhi has been known for waterworks, given the vast number of kingdoms in the city. Among the earliest ones was a dam at Anangpur village, the city believed to be built by Rajput king Anangpal Tomar. This unique Indian hydraulic engineering structure was built around 8th century, running 50 meters long and standing 7 meters high. This dam was more of a water harvesting structure meant to store rain water during the monsoon season. Located close to Anangpur village lies Suraj Kund, the waterworks which is regarded as among Delhi's first organized reservoir. Built in the shape of rising sun with an eastward arc, it's enclosed with a steep embankment made in semicircular shape of stepped stones. These reservoirs took care of need of the city at the time of the shortage of water, given Delhi's topography and warm weather spells. Also, once existed a magnificent sun temple near the Suraj Kund reservoir. Welcome back. The Pakistani army heavily shelled a forward post along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir's Poonch district, uh, drawing retaliation from the Indian army. Now, this is the seventh consecutive day that Pakistan has violated the ceasefire by targeting forward posts along the line of control. At about uh, six in the morning, Pakistan army initiated unprovoked ceasefire violation by shelling with mortars and firing of small arms along the LOC in Krishna Ghati sector. The Indian Army retaliated strongly and effectively. In view of the prevailing situations, the state authorities have ordered a temporary closure of all the educational institutions in a 5-kilometer radius along the line of control in uh, Poonch and Rajori districts. Meanwhile, Delhi, Mumbai and many other cities have also been put on high alert. A red alert was uh, sounded for the entire Delhi metro network on Wednesday by the DMRC, in the view of heightened tensions between India and Pakistan, the red alert was imposed on the entire DMRC network from 6 p.m. onwards. The move came in the wake of escalating tensions. Meanwhile, Indian Railways also issued a security alert across its networks. In view of the escalating tensions, security was beefed up on board all the trains operating in border areas and all uh, rail premises as well. And amid the growing tensions, Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis also proposed to cut short the budget session of the Maharashtra legislature. Army personnel have also been deployed at sensitive locations in Mumbai city along with the local police. And along with the central paramilitary forces, army jawans are guarding key railway stations, airports, areas outside the Western Naval Command headquarters and various defence establishments in Mumbai as well as neighbouring areas. On to some other news now, the Income Tax Department will only issue refunds via the e-mode into the bank accounts of taxpayers beginning 1st of March. In a latest statement, the IT department has said that the taxpayers must also link their PAN with their bank accounts. From 1st of March, the refunds will be sent to bank accounts only through e-refunds. Linking PAN with the bank account is also essential to get refunded directly, swiftly and securely into one's account. The IT department added that the bank account could be either savings, current cash or overdraft. The taxpayers can also check if their bank account is linked with the PAN by logging on to the e-filing website of the department. And big setback for the National Herald a publisher. The Delhi High Court today dismissed the publisher Associated Journals Limited's plea challenging uh, a single judge order to evacuate its premises at ITO. While hearing the matter, a bench of uh, Chief Justice uh, Rajendra Memmanan and Justice uh, V.K. Rao rejected the, the appeal of Associated Journals in which it had challenged the centre's decision asking it to vacate the ITO premises in New Delhi. The AJL had appealed against the single judge uh, last year's uh, order that directed it to vacate the premises at ITO within two weeks. 
On the occasion of National Science Day today, Vice President M. Venkia Naidu attended the Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Summit and Awards on Innovation in Governance 2019 at Pravasi Bharti Kendra. And at the event, the Vice President uh, conferred the awards to those who have uh, done exceptional work in improving governance and delivering a value to the citizens from across 10 states. Former Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan was also conferred with the award. And speaking at the occasion, the Vice President said that uh, the awardees have implemented innovations in various areas of education, healthcare, women and child welfare. And in the wake of growing tensions between India and Pakistan, the Vice President also urged the United Nations to come together to cut the source of terror. As I told you, we never attacked any country but in the Hindu Bhagra, that what 91,000 Pakistani soldiers were sent back home without doing any harm. This has to be understood. That is the history and that is the culture, that is the civilization of India. They should understand this and they should give up this and then work towards peace and progress. Terrorism of any kind, it should be put down with an iron hand. The entire world community must, community must join together. The United Nations must conclude its deliberations and then go for early action to cut the source of funding to the terrorists. The big international story, the nuclear summit between US President Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un in Hanoi ended without an agreement. The White House said that both the leaders had very good and constructive meetings and discussed various ways to advance denuclearization and economic-driven concepts. However, no agreement was reached on nuclear talks and respective teams do hope to meet in the future. In the event, both the leaders left the summit venue without a public signing ceremony. The Hanoi summit was supposed to build on their initial historic meeting at Singapore that critics said was a uh, more style over substance. And will there it, it be was about third, the sanctions. Will we there be a third summit, Mr. President? Basically, uh, they wanted the sanctions lifted in their entirety, and we couldn't do that. They were willing to denuke a large portion of the areas that we wanted, but we couldn't give up all of the sanctions for that. So we continue to work, and we'll see, but we had to uh, walk away from that particular suggestion. We had to walk away from that. And that's the wrap on this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.